Uninitialized data access vulnerabilities, what are they? Well, we know that memory that is uninitialized and not set to anything in particular will retain whatever value it was previously set to. This becomes a security problem when the previous set value turns out to be ACID. So if the vulnerable code is using uninitialized data that turns out to be ACID, then it's going to have all the same sort of problems that we've seen in the past. Now, as before, me US guy no like lot word chunk. So we're not going to call it uninitialized data access. We're going to call it OODA. Nice and simple, two syllables, OODA vulnerabilities. So let's see a trivial example of this. On the stack, we've got main, which has buff, eight characters, but it is initialized to zero, so that must not be the problem. And we have int i, which is also initialized to 1337. Then it, check, then it prints out the argc, and it checks if it is greater than one. It does a string copy, which we know is one of those suspicious functions that we don't like. String copy of argv1 into buff. Well, right there, we can see that's going to be a stack overflow potential, right? But this is the OODA section, so we're not worried about stack overflows. We want to find the OODA vulnerability. Okay, so it's copying attacker controlled values into buff, and then it's taking the address of the zeroth element of buff, treating it as a integer pointer and dereferencing that pointer and storing the value into i. So it's basically immediately taking whatever the attacker controlled value was and storing it into i. Then it checks if the zeroth element of buffer is non-null. If so, it calls this function that I'm calling the acid setter func, passes the address of i. Well, in acid setter func, int p, the int pointer p, is immediately dereference and stored into the local variable i inside of the acid setter func scope, and then it just prints that out. So, okay, we know that that value right there is coming from i, i is coming from buff, so whatever this attacker decides to pass in, that is what will be printed there. Okay, and then when this returns, now it calls another function that I'm calling the OODA func. This OODA func got the same address of i from the previous scope, but here it has a local variable i, and oh no, the programmer forgot to initialize this to anything. It's not initialized, and then it's immediately used. So that is an OODA vulnerability, uninitialized data being used. Of course, this particular one is not going to lead to any sort of truly advantageous problem for the attacker, but we just want to show it, and this is a trivial example for reference. So if you were to run this on different systems, you'll see different results. Here I ran it on an Ubuntu system, and you can see with no parameters, the argc is one, and the output value is just some uninitialized garbage. And furthermore, this uninitialized garbage changes between invocations. So call it once, you get 7FFC. Call it again, you get 7FFD. 7FFE, 7FFE. Okay, so that uninitialized garbage is just changing naturally between process invocations. Then if the attacker passes in a attacker controlled string of A's, then that will lead to 414141 being printed out because that's capital A. Furthermore, the attacker could pass some hex string and guarantee that that hex string will be printed out as well. They could also pass a null string and then you would get right back to that situation of uninitialized garbage being printed out. So it may vary from invocation to invocation on some systems. Ran the same thing on my Mac, and on that one, we got the exact same value printed out every time when we just ran it with no parameters. And with an empty string, it always printed out one instead of going back to the uninitialized behavior like the Ubuntu system did. And of course, if you pass in something like four A's, you'll get out four A's. So we want to visualize that quickly, and just a reminder for our stack diagrams from vulnerabilities 1001, low address is low, high address is high, least significant byte to the right, most significant byte to the left, and of course stacks always grow from high addresses towards low addresses. So what we call the stack bottom is at the top of the diagram, and the stack top is at the bottom of that diagram. Yes, I know, it's fun. Cool, so invocation of dot OODA1, has something like this, argv of zero is whatever the program name is. So our stack would look like this. If we invoked OODA1 from our home directory, then that path would be an argv of zero. And the first thing it did was initialize buff of eight to zero and i. So buff of eight will say is there and i is here. And then it does checks. It says if argc greater than one. Well, we didn't pass any arguments this time, so that's false and it'll skip that.
if buff of zero is not equal to zero, do something else. Well, it's equal to zero, so it's not going to do that. And then finally, it'll call the OODA func passing the address of i. So the pointer passed in is going to point at this i, but that's not actually the i that's going to be used inside the function. It's using its own local variable, and that is uninitialized. And so that is the OODA issue, but you know this in and of itself is not a security issue. What you want to see for it to become a security issue is that the uninitialized data gets filled in somehow by attacker control data. So let's continue on. If we passed AAAA into this instead, then that would be there for argv of 1. And of course, this is going to be initialized the same way as last time. Now it says if argc is greater than 1, and it is because we've got another argument, do the string copy of the attacker controlled argv of 1 into buff and then get the address of buff zero and immediately dereference it and put that value into i. So the string copy takes the a's and copies them over buff and then the immediate dereferencing of the zeroth element as if it were an integer will set 41, 41, 41 into i. Then the address of i will ultimately be passed. Okay, and there's Kate telling us that this is the magic acid value, right? Okay, so buff of zero is not equal to zero, and therefore it's going to call the acid setter function. Acid setter function takes the address of this i, and it passes it as p, and immediately dereferences p, and then that is stored into i. So that is setting attacker controlled value at this location and printing it out. But of course, just printing out an attacker controlled value is not necessarily a security issue. What I want to call attention to is the fact that we lie to ourselves and we say that when the acid setter function returns, its stack frame just completely disappears and it goes off into imaginary space and doesn't exist anymore. But the truth of the matter is that that memory still retains exactly the value that was set during the acid setter function. So it's still there behind the scenes, ready to be used by the OODA function that is using this exact location as uninitialized data. So then we go back up to main, main calls the OODA func, passes the address of i, which is the address of this, doesn't actually use it, uses its uninitialized local variable i, but this is still technically uninitialized in the sense of what's going on with the program, but it has been maliciously pre-initialized by the attacker to an acid value. And so now this is the security problem. The fact that uninitialized data can magically become acid data can cause problems for programs that are using uninitialized data. So this is our security issue that we're going to be looking at in this section. And so while the previous code was not in and of itself a security vulnerability, what if the code was changed ever so slightly so that udafunk returned the integer i? And then what if udafunk was called to return a length that was going to be used in a mem copy? Well, in that case, then we'd be right back to stack overflows with a acid length, an acid source buffer, and a destination that is too small for this arbitrary sized copy that's about to occur. So that's the kind of vulnerability that can occur when there is uninitialized data access or OODA problem. All right, one more quick example using the heap instead of the stack. So here main mallocs a buff one and a buff two. It takes the address of buff one and it puts it into I. And then it's going to print out the buffers. It's going to check, you know, again, print the argc, check if it's greater than one, do the string copy if it's greater than one. So basically it's doing the attacker controlled contents into buff one, but then it's doing a mem set with the exclamation point just to initialize buff two to a fixed value. So that's good. And this is potentially, you know, feeding acid through the program. Then it checks buff one of zero. If that's non-zero, then it calls opt reloc and it passes the address of buffer one and buffer two. What does opt reload do? Well, it takes that buffer one and buffer two and it frees them, and then it re mallocs them, and then it just prints out the new addresses that it's gotten. Now, I'll just say that based on the particular Ubuntu system that I was running on, you know, and this is the kind of thing where an attacker would know what their target is, they'd know how their target behaves. Well, I knew just experimentally that if I reordered these and I made it so that I mallocked buff two before buff one, then I would actually get buff two back as exactly the same address as was before.
So I did that just to make a point about the fact that, you know, when you freeze stuff and then you malloc it again, depending on the implementation of the heap, you could be getting back the exact same addresses that you had before. And given the fact that buff1 has acid in it and buff2 has clean initialized data in it, if I'm getting back the exact same addresses as before, then, you know, at least for my diagrams and my visualization, that makes things simpler. But for purposes of knowing where acid is going to be flowing in the program, that can be important. So once those reallocations occur, and it just freed it, and then it uh, got it again, the key point again is that we have freed the data and we have remalloced it. So technically, even if we get the exact same address, this is technically uninitialized data at this point. After it's freed, there should be no dependency whatsoever in the code on what the values should be. Furthermore, we freed it, and if this was much more complicated code, the attacker might have had an opportunity to fill it in with acid, where the you know clean initialized data was, for instance. Okay, so once opt reloc returns, then we're down here, and I've got a for loop where all of the point of it is just to print out the contents of buff1 and buff2. I'm printing at i because we had set i equal to buff1's address back here, so print out one integer at a time, values from i, and then set i equal to buff2 and print out one integer at a time from buff2. And then this is the OODA vulnerability. But then at the end of the day, the important thing is blah. So this right here is the ultimate OODA vulnerability. This is using uninitialized data because buff1 was reallocated in here and there was never any subsequent initialization. So any use of buff1 after that point before initialization is uninitialized data access. But let's see how this turns from just plain uninitialized garbage into acid. Okay, so this is just the output that I got on one particular Ubuntu system. You would see different things if you run it somewhere else. But this output right here was the looping over buff1 and printing out values. And this is the printing out of buff2. So from this, we can see that something weird happened because we never set zeros into the first four integer locations in buff1. So something happened there, probably occurring because of the free. But what we can definitely see is that there's still acid hanging out in buff1. And that is acid because of this invocation of AAA, BBB, CCC, etc. This right here is going to be EEE, FFF, GGG. So this is acid values. The attacker controlled it based on the argv1 that they passed in. And now it's still just hanging out, despite the fact that we freed and malloced again an address. And then similarly, we can see that there's some sort of clobbering going on for the beginning of buff2. And we can see that there's clean values that are still there. This is hex21 is the exclamation point. And at this point, I'll just point out, you know, a little bit of a hint of what kind of reuse or clobbering is going on. If we look at the particulars of this value, it's 5, 6, 2B, 9A, CB, then we can actually see that 5, 6, 2B, 9A, CB. This looks like it is actually a pointer to buff1. So somehow buff2 got a pointer to buff1 in it. And again, this all just comes back down to the particulars of a heap implementation which an attacker would study and understand before they tried to do these sort of vulnerabilities against some particular target. But the end of the day thing was this printout of buff 1 of 16, which here is the EEEE, -E -E, and that is the usage of acid data that has not been reinitialized, but is just uninitialized data, which under normal circumstances would be garbage, but because the attacker could control it, then now it becomes acid. Okay, so a reminder, our heap diagrams are the opposite of our stack diagrams. High addresses low, low addresses high, big end to the right, little end to the left. So, and of course, memory writes occur from low addresses to high addresses. So now we're going to have a diagram that has both the stack and the heap on it. We've got the stack on the left and we've got the heap on the right. And so we need to see what's going on here. Well, first thing, we've got malloc for buff1 and malloc for buff2. So buff1 and buff2 are local variables, so those are going to show up on our stack here, and buff1 is going to point somewhere on the heap, and buff2 is going to point somewhere on the heap. Then the address of buff1 was used for i, and so i will just become a local variable that points at the same place as buff1 points. Then there's the check if argc is greater than 1, which it is here because we're invoking it with aaaa, bbbb, and so then it does the string copy of all of these a's through f's 
into buff one, and then it does the mem set of exclamation point into buff two. So that looks like this, boom, initializing all of this contents from buff one, and buff two is initialized to known good data. Then there's the call to opt rea look, and that's going to free buff one and free buff two. So the free, I'm gonna say, okay, well, those things don't point there anymore. Later on, when we get into the use after free section, we'll learn that actually they do still point there and that's a problem, but that's not here yet. So buff one and, and buff two are not pointing and that memory is you know theoretically freed and unfortunately Keynote doesn't let me explode this and make it transparent like it would with just uh, normal non-table elements. So I'm just gonna leave that there and just say it got freed, but uh, I can't represent it exactly other than the fact that we did see that there was some weird clobbering of the first four integers worth of space there. So something clobbered that as a side effect of free, and you know that's just the heap implementation detail, and it depends on the particular heap. So those got freed and they got clobbered, but some of the acid didn't get clobbered. Some of the acid is still hanging out. So when we call malloc on buff two and malloc to buff one, we're going to get the pointers back. It turns out they're just, you know, sort of allocating them in the opposite order as they were initially allocated. And so now buff one's back to pointing here and buff two's back to pointing there. And then the final thing is at the end of the day, the important thing is blah. And we see that that was using buff one of offset 16. It's a character array, so it's 16 bytes forward. Get the address and immediately dereference that address as if it was an integer. And so that means that this data that it's using, ease, is attacker control data. So this is the OODA vulnerability. It was uninitialized as far as we're concerned. It's just some freshly allocated heap space that we shouldn't expect anything about the output. But because, of course, I knew the way that this was doing, I just simply coded up as a trivial example to show you the usage of acid coming off of the heap because of some prior allocation and that'll play into the types of vulnerabilities we'll see in this section. So the most common causes of OODA vulnerabilities are not initializing your data when you declare a local variable on the stack, not initializing the contents that's handed back to you from the heap, and then things like using structs but only partially initializing them. So you set a few values and maybe you expect some code somewhere else to set some other values, but then that code doesn't. That plays into this last bullet here, accidental failure to initialize down an uncommon control flow path. So the most common place this is seen is that if you have the allocation of some memory and then you have like an initializer function, you pass the address of your allocation into the initializer and you expect, okay, initialization function just always initializes these structs for me. But maybe that initialization function has a control flow path where it'll return early and it hasn't initialized everything then the code that you know just called the initializer and expects that it always initializes everything it just uses that what it assumes is initialized data that has not actually been initialized if that's the case then again we have these situations where if the attacker could set some contents into the heap before the allocation that was then passed into the initializer then they could potentially have acid being used for the uninitialized data so again we'll see all sorts of vulnerabilities of this type in this section so one last thought on the capability for soft human auditors to actually find the flaw when it comes to OODA vulnerabilities is the fact that once you get to reasonably complicated code that has lots of indirect control flow, function pointer usage, and the like, it becomes much harder for an auditor to confidently assess whether or not some particular thing could be OODA or not. So this is why you should start to bring tools to bear, things like memory sanitizer, which you'll learn about later on, or fuzzers, which have been mentioned in previous class as well. And the thing is, even once you bring a tool to bear, so the person who's found the OODA vulnerability has to backtrace it and figure out where the data can be potentially set to asset. If it's an attacker, of course, they have much higher interest in making sure that they can actually control that. Whereas if you're a defender and you're a programmer, you of course just wanna find what's the right place to initialize it. Key thing is that the best place to initialize it is upstream, ideally where the thing is first allocated. And you definitely don't want to initialize it downstream where the actual vulnerability was found because the point at which it has actually been used as uninitialized data 
means that there could have been a whole big acid flow and you just found yourself on one particular branch, but that acid could have flowed elsewhere through the code and if you fix the problem right close to the place that it was used, then there could still just be a bunch of other variants on different control flow paths. You have to figure out where the allocation is occurring and try to initialize it as soon as possible after allocation and as completely as possible.